Today, you're gonna to learn about fasting, what I think women should do on this. So let's get ready for a very controversial show. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to A Different Perspective. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Hope you've had just a wonderful week. I am so excited that you guys join me every Saturday and see our shows and watch our videos and watch our Instagram and watch our YouTube, all the great things that we have out there. But I really, really can honestly tell you, after everything I do, today's uh, show, always Saturday mornings, is always my favorite to be here. Uh, we always Travis behind the camera here. Um, producing everything, doing great. We've got our interns here. It's always a, a fun time. So, And I like to get here nice and early and view all my shows. So I just love it because this morning, man, it was cold this morning. <laughs> well, that's one thing nice about being in Wisconsin. You just kind of love, yeah, you don't have to love the cold weather. You just kind of, you know, enjoy it. And and uh, I literally go out there and, and stand out there for a while and uh, get chilled. And it's kind of nice. It's a good thing to do. So we're even talking a little bit about that today when we talk about fasting and everything. So we got lots to cover today. Uh, I got want to thank you guys. I want to thank I want to thank two camps, okay? Because if you've ever been on media, and and I know the people that watch my media, and and, uh, and, and the majority of the time it's women. Uh, I can honestly say I think when I looked at my Instagram stats, I think it's ninety five percent women and then five percent men. And and I know that happens a lot considering the fact that the majority topics I talk about are female related because of what I've been through and my past history and and clinically and what I do. So. I want to set that stage right away and let you know that, you know, I got interviewed the other day. Uh, I want to thank uh, the rabbi that interviewed me. And what it came down to, you had three guys talking about um, both men and female issues. And I, you should have seen, I, I had two camps. I had just a camp that, which was about probably about 90%, just absolutely loved everything I say. And then you had the 10% that, no joke, absolutely hated what I said. And I, I like them both. You know, I like them both for two reasons. Number one, I am not sane. I'm not saying that I have not learned things over the last 24 years. Actually, over the last 30 years since I've been involved in this, I do all time. Uh, does it change my grand scheme of everything? No, 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 let me explain that. I wanna show you guys something. And this is one thing as we have, you know, Dr. Lucas here, Dr. Ryan, Dr. Eby. Um, and there's one thing that I want you guys to know why it seems like I say the same things over the last 24 years of practice. Because here's what happens. Everything in life is based on a great foundation. If you have the foundation right, things as they grow can change, but the major premise behind it doesn't. Now, let me give you an example. I'm gonna tell you right now, so, you need, so if, if, you wanna, if you want to equate just one thing, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about weight loss, psychiatric problems, GI problems, hormonal problems, fertility problems, every, every problem on the planet. If you can understand that every time that you tune into this show, or every time that you see a reel of mine or a YouTube video of mine, and we're gonna show you today, we're gonna to show you today, and it's so important to know this, that there is a major premise that the foundation, not only at the wellness way, but nobody has been able to prove to me different or convince me different. And every time that I come from this basis, I seem like I make a lot of sense. That's one thing. Like the people that, that, uh, that the 10 percent attacked me, I thought it was great. And, and here's what happens. If you do disagree with when I, something I say, even today, send me a message. I actually, the first thing I do, especially if it's a, if it's a uh, doc, I absolutely hate what you say, you're misogynistic, you're too masculine, no joke, this is some of the stuff I said. And I'm like, thank you. That's the first thing I say, I say thank you. Thank you for my, your opinion. Thank you for your insight. And then I'll just simply start asking some questions. I'm like, why do you think it this way? And they'll be like, and I had one person say, well, you're just a, a, a testosterone driven man. I'm like, is that supposed to be a derogatory thing? Um, am I supposed to be, you know, I know in a culture today, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. So I was saddened because I don't watch them, but the Packers lost the other day. Okay. Um, I wanted them to win and hopefully go to the playoffs and do all this stuff that. But the thing is this, um, if you think about it this way, there is great competition. I mean, people are jacked up for it. They're rooting for it. They're just, they're literally praying for the Packers and they're just like, they want their home team to win. And, and they get jacked up and they yell and scream and they're tense about it. They paint their body green and gold. I mean, they basically bleed it. And they want 
to, to beat the Detroit Lions like crazy. I mean, man, you see some of the anger that, that happens even on Facebook if they're behind and things like that. And you know what's funny? I understand. Do you know why? Because men by nature, and not say women don't, but it's less, men by nature are massively competitive. Massively. They want to beat the competition. So I wanted the Packers win. I just didn't care because it doesn't really affect my life. So if they win, I'm jacked up. I want the Packers, Brewers, Milwaukee Bucks, uh, Wisconsin Badgers, I want them to win, never, nor I ever watch a game because I'm just a hometown person or a home state person. But the point is this, is like that competitiveness is like, oh my goodness, and I understand that. Now, do you understand in our world today, especially being a male, that's the only acceptable, acceptable mental aspect of competition and being testosterone driven that's acceptable by women. You know, and, and let, me, let me correct that a little bit so I made my statement properly. In the culture of female mentally dominant that way. I'm like going, no, let me give you an example. This is going to frustrate some of the side that called me, you know, testosterone, different that. Let's say that we are in competition in business. Now, nice thing is this. I'm in competition with nobody because I, we're really, really unique. But let's say somebody tried to copy us of that. And let's say it's a woman who was the leader of that company. I don't care if you're a man or woman, I am going to do everything I can as far as a competitive male to outperform you, outshine you, outshow you, and I'm going to do everything to win. I don't care if you're female, I don't care if you're male. And see, it's kind of interesting. So I kind of find it funny when I got a comment that said, I said, thank you. You know, tell, you know, uh, tell me what, why you view it that way. And she's like, well, you're just a testosterone driven male. I'm like, since when is that a bad thing? I'm like, I said, understand this. And I started walking through some examples. And I said, so therefore, when I look at the female body and go, man, we're gonna learn about today, that when I look at that at, at, at time, now this is gonna bother some of you guys when I say this, but I don't care, <laughs> you understand? Because it's, it's true, and that's the one thing I wanna come back to. I wanna come back to my point that I started at. Because the foundational things that I base this whole company on, and has not been disproven yet, is that the body itself does not make mistakes. It's not a broken down machine. It's not, and no one has been able to convince me, prove to me, or show me that the body ever makes a mistake. Let me give you, the, I've said this example well over a thousand times. Um, I, once again, I was working on my slides and that, and it was nice and warm in there, and I was getting all cozy, and I'm like, Oh, and I, no joke, and I got up uh, somewhere, I don't know, 4.30 or so, and, you know, splash water on my face, because you shouldn't shower every day, that's one of our show. Splash water on, my, uh, water on my face, you know, wipe things down, you know, shave my head, did all the good things that way. You know what I'm saying? Trying to look out cute for you guys. And all of a sudden, um, I, you know, my, and my garage is heated, so I, I, you know, I have it kind of pampered, so I kind of, you know, got my garage and this, uh, drove thing, and then I was sudden I get a truck to get in my office, but it's only about 20 feet, jump in, and I'm sitting in a nice warm, warm conference room, reviewing my slides, writing stuff on my whiteboards, and uh, just kind of going through and rehearsing everything for today, and all of a sudden I'm like, ah, I started to get a little sleepy. I'm like, ah, I can feel the blood flow just going everywhere so nicely. And I'm like, I gotta wake myself up. So what I do, I walked outside in the tendery weather and in this shirt, you know saying? in this shirt. And I'm like sitting out there and immediately, immediately, I didn't have to think about it. I wasn't conscious of it. I didn't have to tell my body to do it. My body started to respond to its new environment, which I went from that nice, beautiful, soft, oh, warm. My gosh, I just could snuggle into my chair. Just love the snuggles, okay? and. Um, which, is, which once again, could be considered a feminine quality, but that's okay. There's times your characteristics are feminine and masculine. Okay, here we go. So then all of a sudden I get outside, and I'm like going, and all of a sudden, uh, I'm like, I started to shiver. And no joke, and literally within seconds, this is not a joke, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can pull my ring, my ring comes off easy, but my ring can come off even easier. And also for this, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what happened? My body didn't make a mistake. It said, you want something? I don't know if Patrick knows this, but this could be detrimental if he stays out here for a long period of time. Now think about this. So unconsciously, my body is, is sitting there looking at all of my environment and goes, you know something? Guess what? I, I, he might have made a stupid choice. He might have made a stupid choice. But now I'm so smart 
meaning the innate intelligence that governs our body regardless of what happens, says, you know, I'm gonna pull that blood where? Guys, yeah, towards that core. I I'm gonna protect the heart. Cause you know something, these are important, no doubt, we need these. But if I cut off this hand, nah, yeah, guess what still happens? Life is still good. Now, what I mean by that is, a heart's still gonna pump. You're still gonna survive. But if all of a sudden I started to lose blood and my heart did not have blood, I would die. See, because there is a ranking aspect of the body for survival, it says, need the heart compared to a hand. And if I stayed out there long enough, my body could eventually even lose your fingers and toes. And that's why we talk about having frostbite. You never hear a frostbite of the heart. You know, Sam? Because it pulls it there. Now, darn it, can we freeze that? Absolutely, but that's to the extreme. And see, and so I sit back. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna teach you on fasting. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna teach you on the cycle. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna teach you when it comes to males. It doesn't matter if I teach you females. Man, when you study the human body, you get fascinated with it because it's so intelligent. So intelligent. And all the other healthcare fields view it as a broken down machine. See, so that's why when you look at some of the things that I teach, it always seems a little bit repetitive, not in a way that isn't very enlightening. It's just saying, listen, it's the concept. And the cool thing is this, let's look at what medical technology does. If you think about what medical technology does, they just create technology to try to observe what the body is really doing. Think about that. I mean, that should fascinate you. So I love medical technology. I didn't say medical treatment, medical care. I love the technology behind there going, oh my goodness, they come out with something. Because remember, a long time ago, there was just x-ray. And then they developed MRI. And then they developed CT. And then they developed motion MRIs and stuff. I'm like, emotions, you get my point? And we got to observe what it was like on the inside. But before we had any technology, guess what happened? This intelligent design knew what it was doing regardless if we knew what was in the inside or not. See, and I'm sorry, no one's going to convince me different unless there's some technology that shows that there's, you know, some little robot in the inside and really we're just a bunch of robots and there, there is no nothing in there. Or maybe where there's some little small monkeys on wheels running around and, you know, like the old circus inside and stuff that, who knows, you know what I'm saying? So the major premise. So when I come from the standpoint and that's why medically now here's what happens. I want you to think about this. Now I know right now, I know what you're saying. Damn it, Doc, you make so much sense. That's the biggest compliment that you could ever give me. Don't have to tell me I'm smart. Don't have to tell me, you know, because really, you know what happens is this. People that are trying to act smart try to take something simple and make it very complicated so they seem smart. I'm looking at this complex, amazing thing and say, how can I relate that to everybody out there for their understanding so now when they go look up their stuff, which I think, once again, I know a lot of doctors hate the internet. I love it. I absolutely love it because then you can go, I think Doc is wrong. Holy crap. If I do go outside in the cold, my blood does pull towards my core. I can look it up. I can read about it. And so that's why when I, when I come across and I teach you the concepts I want to teach you today about fasting and some other things, you're going to go, emotionally, I've been taught since I was little, this medical paradigm and all the things that they have and what they taught. And they taught me that, that no, I, I'm no, 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 no. See, that's why if we notice, the one thing is this. When I started practice, in 1999, and I had the same concepts. Did technology change? Yes. Can I, I can tell you that there's blood markers that didn't exist that I use today that didn't exist in 1999. See, medical technology has advanced that, oh my goodness, there's this little protein called CRP, C-reactive protein. And because I'm so big in inflammation, it, it, it actually comes out there. But see, the way medicine thinks CRP, and compared to what I do, we can look at the same lab and go, it's dramatically different because they look and go, oh my goodness, da da da, it's a mistake. I'm sitting there going, mm, that's smart. That's smart. Because just like when I walked outside, I didn't know. I didn't have to tell my body, all right, all right, wait, I'm walking outside, I feel the cold. All right, brain, do me a favor, get the blood away from here, bring it to my heart, because my heart's more important than my fingers. See, there's such intelligence. You should be fascinated. You should be fascinated. So, if you want to be fascinated even more, do me a favor. One thing that I love, I honestly tell you, have the greatest crew on the planet. Travis, interns, all the docs, all the media team. And the cool thing is this, we have so much information on our website. 
So you can go to our newsletter. I, I love seeing what Aaron and Betsy and Lauren all write every week. Scroll down to the bottom. Put it right in the, right in the bottom. You're gonna see right there. Type your email address in. Guess what will happen? You are going to get the greatest information. And it's all free, guys. It's all free. Oh, it's all this. I do these shows. I do reels. I do everything like that. Like I said, I'm not trying to monetize my channel and make a bunch of money. Heck, I get kicked off most of them. <laughs> Actually, I am the most stupidest uh, businessman when it comes to that stuff. I'm like, I'm gonna say what I want, how I want, stuff like this, and if they kick me off, cool. But doc, you know, you could build a YouTube channel and make a business off it. I'm not worried about making a business off it. I'm worried about giving some concepts in a different perspective for you guys to live a better life. Because that concept I've had since I was 20 years old, and guess what happens? I think it turned out okay for us. So, do me a favor, but when you go on that website, go up to the top right, there's a beautiful button up there. Because the one thing is this, EB, Ryan, um, Lucas, one day they'll be up there too. You'll see a nice little click. There's wonderful practitioners and doctors all over the country and wonderful staff that you can see. We keep getting bigger every single month, every single month. I can honestly tell you, um, my investigative journalist, Lauren, her wonderful husband, Christian works for us and Travis, and they are the people in contact with the majority of new offices that are developing. And it's exciting hearing the stories that happens, the people calling them. We had another doc call even yesterday say, hey, listen, the Wellness Way has concepts and practices that seem to be making a big difference. I want to be a part of them. So it's kind of cool. So definitely find those docs. They're up there. It's kind of great. And even more important, it's kind of cool. We've been doing this over the last month. We started with Dr. Jason. We've been doing our weight loss month. And um, obviously, I can honestly tell you, uh, our media team, um, I have to tell you, they're kind of like, they're kind of like, um, let me give you an example. They're very intelligent, okay? So I kind of put them in fight or flight all the time. <laughs> I kind of like make them walk outside, because all of a sudden, I even did Travis this morning, because uh, Travis is great. Travis, like I said, that's the thing. Having professionals do stuff, it, 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 it makes us look really good. <laughs> it really does. Because I walk with Travis, and we're, and he gets here nice and early, I'm saying, okay, Travis, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, now remember, it has been smarter for me to say, hey, listen, Travis, we're gonna do a little bit different on the show, but what I did, uh, because I've always come up with different ideas, and I'm like, ah, uh, and I went to Aaron, our graphic artist, and Deanna, and I said, can you produce with me a couple more slides? Because even though I had pretty much everything all done, I want to add a couple more. And I come to Travis tomorrow, I said, Travis, guess what? We're going to this TV today. And we're going to, because uh, I want that to point some things out besides popping up on the screen. He's like, okay, cool. It's kind of like walking out in that cold and going, and, and, and everything else coordinates for you to get everything done. So as it looks so special, it's because of these people here. So when it started off with Dr. Jason on weight loss, I, and we had our things planned out every Saturday, uh, we change the mode every week. <laughs> we adapt to it and we have intelligent people to make it happen. Now, so as we've been going through weight loss, it's been very important and we started off something with no sugar. It was kind of cool because all of a sudden I got a message um, from, I got a message and all of a sudden it was, it was kind of neat because, you know, a lot of people, uh, we have something called the no sugar challenge page and there's different comments on there. There's, oh my goodness doc, I went away with no sugar and I, and I lost 20 pounds already because we are, what day is it today? It's 21st? Yeah. So we are now on day 21, which is fantastic. Um, and there's people like, oh my goodness, you know, I, I lost a ton of weight and this, this in the first three days. And I watch them stories talking back and forth, which is fantastic because they're sharing their experience. Now let me teach you something. Let me teach you something. Everybody on that page doesn't have the same experience. There's people that avoid sugar for two days, females, and they're like, Doc, I already dropped five pounds. There's females that, act, that, that uh, um, were uh, at 10 days and said, Doc, I finally lost my first pound. There was a person that um, has been doing it for 19 days and quit because she gained some weight. Now people say, how is that possible? I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna show you. And here, that, and, and my point is this, is it's interesting because we all talk about this. Let's say I don't care if it's medically it's breast cancer month, okay, and medically. All they're gonna do is promote chemo, chemo radiation, and uh, surgery. That's it. It's standard protocol. That's why if you ever notice, uh, mammograms, and, then, and because if you wave from their standard protocol, they call it quackery. So if all of a sudden someone says, you know something, I've investigated mammograms, and I look at what they do and what can happen, and I just don't like them. Let's look at some other venues. Quackery, horrible. Isn't that funny? 
that's why it's kind of funny. So when I started talking about, so I put the thing about there, ladies, you shouldn't fast. Man, I had, I had almost like a religious aspect. It was like, that was almost like blasphemy for, for a lot of people. So, and we're going to explain it today. Um, but here's one thing I want to let you guys know. I now am breaking it up into multiple parts because as I start to dialogue with some of these people, and I love dialogue, and it's really funny, I always like dialogue with the haters better. Um, not because, not because um, uh, like I said, I want to give them more attention, but honestly, for you guys that learn and, and conceptually think and definitely think and start putting things in practice, you're on the right track, and so you're going to do it. I'm worried about the people that, that kind of fight you a little bit because I will say this, and I'm going to say this just because I understand how the body works. I'm worried that your concept of health is going to lead you down the wrong path. And maybe it's early enough right now. Maybe you're 30, maybe you're 40, maybe you're 20. And I said something that was inflammatory to you, um, but was basic to me and the majority of people that watch this shows and watch my reels and watch YouTube and things like that. And because I mean this sincerely, I want you to take a look at this. If you look at the concept of, let me ask you a simple question. Pause for a second. If we look at over the last 40 years, do we have more or less illness? Do we have more or less breast cancer, diabetes, heart disease, everything? The dramatically goes up. Do you understand? Well, let me ask this question now. Has there been more childhood illness? Has problems been getting adult-based conditions been getting younger and younger and younger? Absolutely. When I started practice in 1999, type 2 diabetes was called adult onset. It's called adult onset. Isn't it funny? Adult set uh, uh, diabetes, type 2. No, no, no. Now I'm going to flip it a little bit because I used to be a little bit more tough on the person eating and doing things because it is a habitual disease, which most people, most diseases are, but it's a habitual disease. But you know what something is this? You know what something is this? They're habitual because who's led your parents and led you since you were little was the doctor. And in 1999, when I started practice, before the internet became really big, there was Jesus and then the medical doctor was right there. They're, I think they almost came from the same thing. That's what the thought process was. And so over the last three years, I was kind of happy everything happened that way. Because they're like, holy crap, doctors lie. FDA lies, CZ lies, NIH lies, um, WHA lies. And when I'm like, yeah, welcome to the party. We knew it 30, 40 years ago. We knew it for a long time. Fauci's a crook. Yeah, well, kind of, you know, he's part of that whole system. See, and if the system was so wonderful, why do we keep getting sicker? See, you're getting bad advice. So I like haters. I hope that I say something that is to them inflammatory. And so I just had to say it. I'm like, okay, listen, you got a six pack, you're fasting, you're doing this, you're working on it every day. I'll send you some labs. Guess what happens? Man, you should have seen some of the women freaking out and stuff like that. I even had women uh, send me pictures of their abs going, look at this and I'm healthy. I'm like, all right, why don't we have a conversation about it? But better yet, once I walk you through some of the simple concepts, which I'm going to do today, then we'll send you some labs. And then when you have the labs done, then we can have a real conversation. Because I will tell you this, every woman, and I know you guys are watching right now, that reached out and started to talk, and even, first of all, started in going, I've eaten the discreet, you're wrong, you're misogynist. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 whatever works. Whatever you gotta do to start the conversation, I'm cool. And I said to him, I said, have you had these labs done? Now I'm fast forwarding through it right now, but I said, have you had these labs done? And they're like, and I said, just be honest with me, we're trying to, we're trying to figure this out together, I'm trying to share my concepts with you, and every time, every answer was this. No, no, no. So I'm like, then why are you even arguing? Because what happens is this, I put my ideas out there and obviously it triggered you, but it didn't trigger the majority of people because they've been watching for a while and they understand. But the idea is this, I said, you're triggering something emotional, yeah, I'm just asking you to do a lab, which every doctor will agree upon. Do you understand the labs that run are, are nothing special, they're just different. And so therefore, the concept is different. And when you try to bring a different concept to people, a lot of people lose their freaking minds. So, 
that's what happened on Instagram for us. So remind me, guys, um, go to my Instagram page. I th are we live on Instagram right now, Travis? All right, sweet. Hello, all you Instagram wonderful people. Um, it's really funny because I get a lot of love on Instagram and I get a lot of hate on TikTok. Do you see? And I'm like, it's kind of funny. It's like I get like I get like 90% love on TikTok and 10% hate, and I get like 50-50 on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's kind of hilarious. Now, which leads to our thing today, which is important right here. Fasting, working out, the workouts. What's a woman to do? Okay. So before we get started and before we, we switch over to our perspective, I want you to come from this standpoint. And, I want, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeatedly say this because um, what's going to happen is next week, I think, is the end of our weight loss. But I realized I've created so many slides that I realized I might have to break this up into like four sections. Now, what's next month? Next month we're covering, is it mental health? No, I think we did. Didn't we do mental health? No, we did mental health last month. There's some, some topic. But here's the point. Um, as you know, we have perspective, and then we have last 10%. I will probably continue it in the last 10% because I want people to get these concepts because it's very important for them to get them. So, what we, thyroid. Oh my goodness, that's perfect. That's really perfect because we're gonna talk about thyroid hormones anyway, so let, next month is all thyroid. For, perfect, love it. That being said, so we got one more week of this um, um, and then we'll get into it. But I want you to do is like, I want you to come to this comment and say, what's a woman to do? Well. Ladies, especially for you, because I'm going to speak to you. Now, I want the men to understand this because as a man does something for their body, it's dramatically different than a woman. It's dramatically different. How they take care of it, how they do everything, how they work out, how they fast, when they do it, how they do it. Are there some similarities on things? Yes, I'll share that today. But what I'm going to do is I plan on working just on fasting just to, just to a point for you guys to get to understand it and what it is because there's so much misconception, there's so much uh, information out there that they're just not explaining the whole thing. So then people say, I fast. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, it, it, no joke. I had this woman that I took care of and she told me she did keto. And I'm like, got her labs back. And I'm like, you don't do keto. Your hemoglobin with C is high, your glucose is at 104. And she's like, oh no, I do keto till lunchtime. I'm like, so what'd you have for lunch today? A sandwich. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm not joking. So there's concepts that when people use the term fasting or intermittent fasting, they don't have them defined properly. So therefore, what I want to do today is I'm going to define them properly and show you what it really meant. And so that's why when terms are thrown around, and so then all of a sudden I say, you know, women should not fast. And a woman skips a meal every morning they think that I'm telling them not to do that. I'm like, I never said that, okay? Because you have to understand what fasting really is. So we're gonna focus on the ladies, dead around, I'll throw men in there, but here's what happens. Men and women are, are both affected by fasting and working out. It is just different. And I will tell you this, ladies, understand, your body is intelligently designed and what it does is fantastic. It's actually fascinating. It's fascinating for, to understand that, that all of a sudden a little messenger, a little hormone comes to the brain and tells your ovaries and your adrenals and your liver and all these things to work and it, it coordinates together so beautifully. And if it's thrown off a little bit, it's like having it come back to this, having that Swiss watch. One gear can affect a bunch of other gears. And we live in a world to where we so compartmentalize each part of the body. It's like, Doc, look it, I'm, I'm a CrossFitter. I'm, you know, come back up to this, come back up to that picture, Travis. You see in the bottom there, I'm a CrossFitter, look at this. I am healthy, I'm this, whoa, 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 Please don't confuse fitness with health because most of those intense working women, and this happened, this happened on my Instagram. Doc, look it, and she literally took a picture, showed me her abs, and she says, look how fit I, fit I. I said, okay, I said, I agree, you are fit, but can you please be honest with me because we're trying to grow together and learn, I'm trying to get you to see a concept. Do you get your period every single month? And guess what? She didn't respond right away. She didn't respond right away. And I said to her again, I said, can you please answer the question above? And please be honest. I'm not gonna use your name. I'm not gonna do this. And she's like, no, sometimes I skip it for three months. I'm like, so let me ask you a question. If you understand how intelligent the body is and how it's trying to go through a cycle every single month, 
and all of a sudden you are skipping these things, do you consider that being a healthy individual? See, there are some of the concepts that are like, it, it, I kid you not, every one of my doctors and practitioners have experienced this. And watch this. Do me a favor, if you really want to see how funny this is. Find an aunt that's sick, overweight, things like that, and say, you know, auntie, uncle, grandma, you know, are you healthy? I've literally had patients sit across crying because they have cancer or have women sitting across crying because they can't have a baby. And they say, um, you know, if it wasn't for cancer, I'd be pretty healthy. You say, and I'm like going, um, or a person suffers from diabetes. And they're like, well, I'm healthy. I just have diabetes. See, the concept is they don't understand it because you're not taught that. So as you go into this, understand that what you have in the human body is so intelligent. I want you to gain that because then when you see what's supposed to happen and by fasting and working out, ladies, if it's not done very strategically and properly, it's going to lead to unhealthy things, which will now lead to some disease process because skipping your cycle is just a symptom of that you're going downhill. That's it. I said this before, if you have a 16 year old daughter that has, that has now her menstrual cycle and she is skipping it and has cramps and different things, do you consider your child healthy? And everybody says, yes. I'm like, really? Then you're missing the concept of health. And when that manifests into PCOS or endometriosis, it might take 10 years. That could have been avoided if you would have got the concept early. So. Travis, let's, let's do it. That was a heck of a long intro. That was a 30 minute intro. Let's get into our perspective now. I love that jam music. So before I get started, let's clean the slate. I speak to atheists. I speak to, um, uh, Christians. I speak to the Jewish community. I just, like I said, I want to thank the rabbi and his team that had me on. Uh, we will be posting it. Uh, I got invited to speak on his podcast and you guys saw a little bit of a clip on, you know, Instagram and YouTube and he put all a ton of stuff that way. Uh, the show was fantastic. He asked me some really detailed questions. Um, he's a very well-known rabbi in New York and stuff. And I even talked about just even when everything from, from hormones to COVID to everything that way. So we had a great discussion. And I even said to him, I'm like, he lives in New York. I'm like, that state lost its mind when it comes to healthcare. And they really have. And they've lost their mind. And when they talked about all these you know, surgeries they're doing on young kids based on their uh, perception of who they are and what they do. So as you can see from this little graph here, this happens. Don't care what religion you are. I know almost every one of those religions I put up there uh, talk about fasting. They do. And they have a concept of it. So you have to, as I'm going through this, you have to, um, to get rid of any bias you have. Because you know why? Because what's gonna happen is, here's, here's what happens, I, I actually had a conversation um, with some people there, I even, said, I, I even said it to the rabbi, and he did not disagree. Watch, watch the watch thing. Because he's like, you know, you know and, and I hear this in the Christian religion, I hear this in the Jewish religion, I hear it in all the religions that way, and it's like, well, you know something? It says that uh, the Bible says the fast. I'm like, all right, just got a simple concept. Remember, I'm just gonna ask some questions. And if we go back, we all know this, if you know history that way, um, women weren't, didn't, a lot of them didn't read and they weren't allowed to read. Actually, the Bible was written speaking to men. I'm like going, so, so I said the thing, because obviously the Jewish community was big into the Old Testament. And I said, and he's like, well, you know this, this. I'm like, okay, cool. You can culturally believe something, but I just have a question for you. Wasn't the Bible written speaking to men? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, so if it says the Bible says fast, he's telling men to fast. And everybody sits there and they don't have an answer and stuff. Now, once again, I'm just walking through this. I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm willing to learn and things like that, but just some deductive reasoning that way. And that's one thing, I, I, that's one thing that is hard to communicate to. If you ever look at people that can't comprehend or deductively think, they live on catchphrases. They live on traditions. They live on, they can't walk through this thing. Well, my doctor said, well, when, when a person says that my doctor said, you know that I've always taught the people that I took care of and anybody who wants my doctor tells the same thing, is they listen, don't ever say I said this. Not because I, you, I mean, if you want to tell them people where'd you learn from, say, oh, Dr. Flynn said this. Yes, but it, what happens is this. I'm hoping that the concepts we give you, that you sit back and go, 
Ah, you know what I'm saying? Um, sorry, I just had something funny because I was like acting like a girl and curling my hair. I'm like, that's, we could do that with Jewish hair. You know what I'm saying? They got the little things coming down, the little curly thing. <laughs> I don't know why you guys watch this show. I'm still kind of dumbfounded at the stuff that comes in my head. But the idea is this, is like going, ha, ah, the concepts that do happen that way. So once again, understand that as I go through these things, get rid of certain biases that way because we have walked through them because I'm telling you right now, I don't care what religion you are. I guess the only, the only one that, um, even an atheist doesn't agree, disagree with me this. I'm like, sorry, you can't look at the human body and think we just, you know, rolled out of the soup of the ocean. That's one thing, man. If you deductively think and you understand how intelligence is, you have to have more faith to think that you walked, that you were some sludge out of the ocean or there was some big bang and it was just an accident. I'm sorry. I can't get to that. I can't. It's just way too masterful and stuff like that for, for it to be an accident. Now, so when we talk about that whole process, let's get into fasting a little bit because I want you to understand because fasting became such a big health trend that the minute that you talk about it, like I said, people treat it religious. They, do you understand that nutrition, vaccines, politics, and religion, they're basically all the same thing. People lose their freaking mind. They really do. Exercise, you know, all these things. So what I want you to do is just walk through with me on this journey over the next half an hour, 45 minutes, and let's see if I can put some concepts in your head that you can duckly take on. And it's gonna challenge some of your thinking, but I believe it's so simple that when you're done, look it up. It's really simple. And just like when I came up with the concept of why women should sleep eight to 10 hours, once again, I have people go, even a Stanford researcher go, well, that makes a lot of sense. But see, because it's a different concept, it's a different perspective, it's not studied like that. Number one, because there's no money in it too. So let's kind of go through this when it comes to fasting. So let me show you about fasting. And, I, and now here's what happens. Before we put this up, before we put this slide up, what I did today, and I'm gonna have Travis keep these up for about five to seven seconds because I want you to read it with me. I put some written word up there because sometimes when I, when I talk about something, people will catch it. I know I talk fast. And, but I, want, I, I put some written words down today so we can read them together. We can read them slowly, but I want you to really grasp this and then the concept of this. So here we go. Fasting is a physiological stressor. Like anything else, your body may come across. It creates a similar effect on the body as exercise, screaming and others, at others, running from predators and being anxious. Okay, now if you really look at fasting, it puts us in a little bit of a fight or flight state. That's not bad. Now you say, well, Doc, wait, 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 no, 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 we're gonna get to it. But understand that challenging your body a little bit is good, it really is. Okay, you, it's called a little bit of resistance. But see, when your body goes into fight or flight, it responds, it doesn't matter what the stressor is. So I want you to remember that. And, and what, what's important to do for all of you guys out there, there's a certain amount of stress that you need and a certain amount of stress you better not have. And what I've just learned over 24 years, and especially when it comes to women, they're in such an excessive stress of state that's leading to hormonal and health issues. And that's what I'm trying to get across. Because you know why? Because the threshold from what, and here we go, I'm sorry, this is not, this, actually, this is masculine. This is a, I'm gonna teach you something very masculine. A man is ingrained to protect. Do you think I'm joking? It's not that a woman isn't, but a man's ingrained and they're meant to protect to the point of force. To the point of force. I will say this, and I guarantee the FBI is still watching my show. Because if you guys that don't know, FBI showed up at my house. Because here's what happened. Here's why they showed up at my house, and let me be very clear about this, so someone else doesn't report me FBI, even though they left very quickly. If somebody comes to force me or my family to do something, and I was speaking about the vaccine, do you understand? I am a person of freedom. If you, I'm, a person, I'm a person that says, if you want to exercise every day faster, I do the things, and you destroy your body, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm cool with you eating a Kit Kat. I'm cool with you having McDonald's today. I'm cool with you getting three vaccines today. I'm cool with you getting every booster. I'm cool with it. Because I am a civil liberties, personal choice. I don't believe anybody should invade any of your choices. 
Um, the only time I will stand up and be very protective and be very even willing to use force, force is when you try to do something that I don't agree with. And on top of it, well, I mean, I agree with it, that could cause harm. So for example, the reason why the FBI showed up in the house is because I said, listen, if you think you're coming, because they were talking about going door to door and things like that, I'm like, you step on my property, I will use force to remove you, even to the point if it ends up in death. And what I was saying is I will protect my family from everything I believe that detrimental to them. And if force is needed, it, I will get there. And by nature, every man watching this right now says, hell yeah, hell yeah. You bet, EB, I come for your kids, what happens? You're very, yeah, he's like, dude, I'm from Mongolia, I'll whoop your ass, okay? <laughs> you go, you know what I'm Yes, Evie's from Mongolia, okay? But the idea is this, but see, culturally, Mongolia is different than us, but it's ingrained in a testosterone-filled good man to protect, okay? See, so that's the thing. So when I, when I see people put out information that I go on, you're gonna lead that woman to illness. Eh, so I just put information out that gets a different, a different perspective. It's, it's, it's protective nature. It really is. Because I sit there and go, oh man, because you know why I'm protective of it? Because just like I would protect my kids from vaccines, even if the state tried to come around and force them, it's because I see the damage that comes from it. I'm, I, I'm willing to take the hits because to protect my children. But get this, then I watch you know, people out there, and I know I make fun of them. Girls put their shorty shorts on and their halter top on, and they show their six pack trying to sell something. I'm going, and they're like, look at, I work out every day, and I fast, and look at me, and now buy my shake for $19.99. I get it. And so I come along and go, let me run your hormones, and then put that publicly, and let's see what happens. See, I have no problem if you're just you know, saying I'm fit, but then when you try to equate that you're healthy, I'm going, eh. Let's, let's, let's get a little deeper on that. Well, on the flip side, the reason why I'm trying to protect women from this, because those same women call me up and go, I can't have a baby. And I've sat across the, from them for 24 years going, them begging. I actually had one woman that literally was a fitness woman like that. And I said, listen, the only thing you have to do is stop working out every day. I, that was blasphemy. That was basically a religion. And I'm like, okay, I cannot proceed with you or even help you if you won't do that. So let's go back to that definition again, Travis. Fasting is a physiological stressor like anything else your body may come across. It creates a similar effect on the body as exercise, screaming at others, running from prayers, and being anxious. Now, once again, so I'm going to show you once it, as we look and we start to fast what happens over the course of roughly 72 hours. I put up a little graph. Guess what happens? We're going to talk about it, and I'm going to show you some things, but I want you to have the concept. I'm going to generalize it and show you some things, but I'm gonna also show you now what happens to women compared to men. Now I will tell you right now, it's imperative, and I know the majority of you women are watching this right now, it's imperative for your husband to fast, as long as possible, as long as possible. Doc, should he go a bunch of days? Yep, he should. Now there's, I have videos on how men should fast and everything, but really what happens is this, is if they're not fasting on a regular basis, there's gonna be some health issues. So it's really simple. So I'm gonna walk through over here. I'm gonna take time and kind of walk through basically a 72 hour period what happens when there's fasting. So here we go. All right, well, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta put on a little thing there, there we go. All right, so what happens inside your body when you fast? So really what we're gonna do, we're gonna go from zero, 12, 18, 24, 48, and 72 hours. So I wanna talk about this, all right? So the minute that you, let's say, let's say this, let's say that you stop eating at like 6 p.m., okay? 6 p.m. or even 7 p.m. It's very common for people today to have a little layer of supper that way. And all of a sudden, so that's zero. So you had last food. Now, if you fast, and once again, and you, have, you, start to, you start to reduce your intake and you bring in no food for 12 hours, there's an increase of growth hormone. So think about that. That's why when people, here's, here's a concept I want you guys to understand, is if you're, sorry, I got my cameras over here. Uh, I want you to think about this. That's why when people say, um, you know, some doc, you need to eat every couple hours. I'm like, all right, what are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to accomplish when you try to eat every couple hours? 
and uh, well, I need enough nutrients. Uh, that's not true. You can get enough nutrients. I'll tell you right now, the reason why people, when they say that they have to get enough nutrients, so they have to eat every couple hours, that means the density and the nutritional value of the food is very little. It really is. Because I can tell you right now, most people's meal, the majority of people's meals that they eat in breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I can beat it just by doing three ounces of liver. Three ounces. From fat soluble vitamins to trace minerals to everything. See, so it's not really about having enough nutrients, okay? So that's why, once again, that you want to do is you want to get to that 12-hour state. So let's say this. So let's say that you stop eating at 6 o'clock and you don't snack, get to bed at 10. Guess what happens? By 6 o'clock in the morning the following day, you're starting to get some growth hormone. That's a cool thing. Growth hormone is good for repair, regeneration. It's really important. Testosterone is very important. Estrogen is very important. Now, as you hold off and go to about the 18-hour mark, all right, roughly, and, and, and I see some research that says 16 hours and 18 hours. Uh, I haven't seen anything over 18 hours, but about 16 to 18 hours. So let's give it a little bit of flexibility there. 16, 18 hours, there's something that's called autophagy. All right, now what is that? So I want you to think about now that there's immune cells and other tissues of the body that starts to recycle old, dead, dying proteins and starts to clear out infections. All right, follow me on this. Watch this. Get a cold, get a virus. Do you ever notice how your body doesn't want to eat? You know, there's an old saying, you know, uh, if you eat when you're sick, you feed your sickness. See, that's why if you notice, the body is so intelligent, it says, I'm not hungry. And I have parents call me up and say, da, yeah, my, my child has a fever, aka either viral or bacterial, and he doesn't, he's not eating. Yeah, so it's intelligent. I'm like, cool because the autophagy. So what I want you guys to do, do me a favor, just go to Google search, type in autophagy and infections. And once you hit autophagy, you genetically kick in a response to your body says, okay, listen, I, I got a little stressor and I'm, I'm, I'm now gonna start to deal with it that way. So it's really kind of cool. And then what it does, it also takes and says, all right, I'm now getting into a little bit of a fight or flight. So therefore I might not get any more proteins. And so what it does, it circles through the body and starts eating up and repairing old dead proteins. It cleans out the house. It does. It does this in both men and women. So roughly that 16 hour to 18 hour, so let's give it a little leeway. So let's say you stopped eating at six. By noon the next day, guess what happens? You're in an autophic stage, which is kind of cool. So you start doing it. Now it's kind of neat because here's also what happens. As you clean up that other protein that way, you tear up dead tissue. Even that helps you cosmetically. That's why a lot of people say, oh my goodness, you fast and you look younger. Yeah, because you're actually starting to regenerate those old proteins. And you're trying to take some, it's like this. Um, you know, I just, uh, we got a house for my daughter down in Atlanta, daughter and Dr. Devin down in Atlanta. And all of a sudden, get this. So, nice house, but it needed a little repair. So, we, you know, we redid the room and we took out some cabinets and put some new ones in and we did some of this. And so basically, that was an autophic state. I said, listen, it's a nice house, but it needs a little inside, needs a little bit of regeneration in there. And so we can get that when we get to about that 16, 18 hour mark. Now, it really is significant between 16 to 24 because what happens is in 24 hours, you start to peach, deplete your liver glycogen, which is your sugar storages. It's how it's stored in the liver. And then what's not, and here's what happens, when the, that gets too full and you end up with fatty liver, it starts depositing in other areas of the body. And that's the word, the visceral fat. Visceral means organs around the organs. So you can see that if you ever see a cadavers of a person that has a bunch of visceral fat, it's just like, you know, white fat packed everywhere around the organ. Now, so it's significant. But what happens by that 24 hour state, it, there starts to be big time inflammation reduction, gut healing. Remember, that's when people have SIBO. I gave you the example. And I know she's watching right now. I've used the example much. Dr. Laura, um, I made her fast for three days because I believe that she had a little bit of overgrowth. Now you say, Doc, hold the phone. You're gonna talk about a little bit. You don't, you don't want women to do that. No, 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 there's sometimes I do. See, individualized. But I did prepare her, and she already knew it because she's a brilliant doctor. She already knew it, and, and I said, uh, I said now, now Dr. Laura, remember this. Your cycle's gonna be thrown off a little bit. We're gonna get that in a little bit. And it did, it was like clockwork. Because, but at that time, there was a, we needed to address something very specific. So I guided her through the process and it did it. 
tore it up and it was great and it was fantastic. And here's what happens. You also start to increase your stem cells. What are stem cells? Stem cells are cells that don't have a place yet. So therefore, if I need some repair to my liver, those stem cells can now travel the liver, out of your bone marrow, go there, repair. They can go to the heart, they can go to the kidneys, they can go and see there's some repair and regeneration. So, it's, so we get to gut healing, we get a better heart, we get brain for BDNF, which is a factor that helps start to regenerate psychological tissue. That's why when men fast, and that's why ladies, it's not a joke. If you want your man more driven, more competitive, a better thinker, he needs to fast. He does. Because sugar and the consumption of food too regularly actually dumps him down. It really does. And that's why one of the biggest things they say, Doc, I, I think clear. Yeah, because you know, your BDNF is increasing. There's, there's some great factors. Now, if you continue between, you know, on past 24 hours into that 36 hour mark, you start to get some, some protein sparing. People think, and see, people think, well, oh my, oh my goodness, you know, um, if I, if I, fast, I'm going to start losing some muscle tissue. Well, not really. There, you know, where it comes down to is when you start getting a starvation, your body can take muscle tissue and do it. But majority of people um, have some adipose tissue that they can get rid of. They can, and they'll start to tear apart all those fat. And now for a guy, it works out kind of nice because we do not need a lot of fat. We need to keep a certain body percent of fat, but women need to keep a lot more. And that's why when they start fasting for a long period of times, guess what happens? It becomes a problem. Okay. Now, as you go to, and you start to get into that, you know, 40 hour mark, your antioxidants start to flood the system because it's trying to regenerate and repair. Then you get to 48 hours. Now stem cells really increase, really increase. Um, they have shown this and that's why, that's why the whole cancer industry has this wrong because it's so well documented. The fact that people that fast guys, men or women, you have cancer, you have to start fasting. It does because not only is it a metabolic condition and it lives off of sugar and it feeds sugar, and it's why they even use CAT scans and different dyes they run through and sugar-based because it'll be absorbed off by bad cells. But what happens is your risk in your tumor destruction and regeneration, and then if you add the good things in like, you know, vitamin C and mistletoe and other, other factors and other things that they need, you can have a very high reduction in cancers dramatically. And we've done that. Okay. Are we treating cancer? Nope. We're trying to get, or trying to put the body back to its normal state and cancer doesn't exist unless it's in a stressed state. All right. Then you start to see increased mitochondria big time, big time. And you get the repair of the mitochondria, which now leads to less chance of a cancer because there's one thing that every cancer doctor will tell you is cancer starts within the mitochondria big time. That's where it starts. So therefore think of it this way. So, and that was just at 48 hours, you get to 72 massive stem cell changes, massive immune changes. That's why when a person wants to do these things, it takes some time of fasting. Now, just to let you know, this is both documented in both men and women. Well, doc, you just proved everything you said wrong when it came to women and fasting. Hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone. Because you know why? It's dramatically different for those. But if you look at this way, going from here, I want you to really get focused on that 16 to 24 hour state. Cause that's something that I would actually be a little bit more we're going to talk about. These long-term things. So if you're a man, and that's why you, you hear me say this all the time, especially at my hormone seminar, that men, you need to fast at least 72 hours every three months. Would I like to see it monthly? Absolutely. You'll just create this much better. You will. So, all right, let's get back here. So uh, as you saw that, I'm hoping that you watch that, take a screenshot of it, talk about it, research it, look it up. It's quite easy. All right. But now we have to do is because I've used the term fasting multiple times. This is where a lot of the confusion comes in because when you do fast, um, there is those responses that happen, but let's define fasting. All right. So if we look at this, so I want to look at some nutritional framework that is well known out there. And I put some things up there and I kind of misled you a little bit. We're going to talk about it. Look at the thing way to the left dietary restriction. No, no joke. This is why all diets work because you restrict some bad stuff. You really do. That's what people say, Doc, I, I, I love eat right for your blood type because it changed my life. Well, what'd you eat like before? I ate like shit. Oh, well, of course it's gonna change your life. You say, Em, but you tell me every person needs to eat right for your blood type? Do you tell me everybody needs to do a sugar challenge? No. I'm gonna prove to you in just a short time. Next one, calorie restriction. Doc, do you believe in calorie restriction? Of course I do. Of course I do. There's no saying. 
eat less, live longer, eat more. Which means you just live longer, so you eat more just because you, you, you live longer than if you live less. So that's why portion control has been shown. Now, the last one, fasting, and you can see there, this is where everything is misunderstood. People are misled because what they start to do is they start to create terms that, that by definition don't make any sense. So then when people say, I fast, I'm like, um, no, you don't, okay? Because here's what happens, and we're gonna talk about this. If you look at what fasting really is, here's a better representation. Fasting is when you eat nothing for a 24 hour period. If you eat within a window of 12 hours or eight hours or six hours, you are time restricting feeding. It's time restriction feeding. It's technically not fasting. So that's why when people say, doc, I fast, I just don't eat breakfast. Okay, I think that's wonderful. I'm gonna show you some things that you can do. I can, and I can show you based on your labs, when is your appropriate time to eat? And when is your appropriate time to skip some things? So when you look at this, I want people to understand that intermittent fasting is not time restricted eating. Do you understand the term fasting was meant to be 24 hours or more? Let me say it again, 24 hours or more. And technically, technically, I wanna go back to this graph real quick. Um, Travis, let's pop this up here. It's interesting. I have a theory. I'm putting a theory out there and I believe I'm right. I really do, okay? If you look at all these changes, they really start to go crazy at 72 hours. They really start to go crazy at 72 hours. All right, Travis, let's come back here. I have a little theory on this. Now, I've spoken to some GI docs. I have a very good friend who's a GI specialist. I said, okay, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Let's take the healthiest person and sickest person you know, and let's clump them together a little bit. What is the transit time from the time in transit, obviously transportation from mouth to rectum? To where you're pooping out. I said, what is the average transit time for a person from when they eat something to when it leaves the rectum? And the answer is all the same. Two to three days. Two to three days. And on top of it, here's what I want you to think about. Is if you look at what happens, a person that puts in, and he said sometimes people things can go through for 24 hours, but the fastest to go through be 24 hours. <gasps> think about that. So if you eat within a 12 to 16 hour period, you're still eating. Let me give you an example. If I eat something, I, I actually absorb some nutrients in my mouth and it goes into my bloodstream. Gets the stomach, the same thing, gets small intestine, the same thing, gets the large intestine, the same thing. So until it leaves the large intestine, you are still eating. You are still eating. So the transit time to go from mouth to rectum on the average is two to three days. And that's why I believe if you look at that graph again, you look at this here, you really start to see some major things happen and life goes crazy. It goes at 20, 48, 72, you go past 72, it's heaven on earth for guys. It can even be that way for women, but they have to understand that it's gonna mess up your cycle. So I am more favor if I'm going to do, have a woman fast for a long period of time because they have some major health issue, including cancer, that they're in the menopausal state because as you notice, when women exercise too much or fast too long, they go into a menopausal state. That's why they skip and delay their cycle. Yes, that's genius. See, but it has to be guided. See, that's the big thing about it. And that's when you sit down and, and there are some times that I have made, and not made things, that I've encouraged them to massively, hey, you have cancer. I need you to avoid some things for a week. Can you do it? Do you understand? And it was a female. Now, did it throw off her cycle? Absolutely. Um, the only thing that's kind of nice, there's sometimes when I was working with women, it never threw off their cycle because we did the things that were needed. So you have to be very specific. And I'm hoping that you guys learn from the next couple of weeks that you could do it if you do the right things in the process so you don't end up hurting your body. But I was like going, this woman has stage four cancer. We don't have much time. You need to fast, okay? Now, let's continue with this. If you look at it that way, so I, that's why you look at the transit time. And that's why if you look at what happens when fasting intermittently was mean like, if you look at even a religious thing, it's like, you know, you know we're gonna do this a certain time per year. And it's usually for a day or two or longer. So when people say intermittent fasting, they've tried to mold that term into time-restricted feeding. 
time-restricted eating, okay? Do not confuse the ten. So if you are still eating daily, now there is one way that you can fast for 24 hours and still eat every day. For example, for example, now I don't encourage this for women, I'm gonna show you why in just a short time, but here's what happens, is men, you could do this. You can almost go on one meal a day. And then one day about every, probably about month, you'll have to go to the next following day. Because here's what you do. Let's say you do eat at six o'clock. Guess what happens? Guess when the next time you should eat. So let's say it's Sunday, 6 p.m. Eat 6.05 the next following day. Then next day, eat at 6.10. And next day, eat at 6.15. Do you follow me? And you can do that pattern. And men, man, tell you, talk about testosterone, talk about vigor, talk about mental clarity, talk about stuff like this. It's fantastic. And I've had some guys even company-wise company do it. And they said, Doc, I got such mental clarity, I went another day. And I went another day. See, that's the thing. That's how you can build momentum. But then mentally, as we know, food's very emotional. So as you can say, okay, listen, I'm going to do 605, and then I'm going to do 610 the next day. I can get most men to do that because they're still eating daily. It's just pushing out. But eventually, I'm going to show you, you don't want to, even if you're, when I get into it, you don't want to go past 9, 10 o'clock eating and stuff like that, especially 10 o'clock, especially 10 o'clock, because now you're going to throw off your whole circadian rhythm, even men-wise that way, so we'll talk about that. So as we continue with this, that's why when they talk about the term fasting versus intermittent fasting, they are two different things. You know what I'm saying? They are two different things because, once again, intermittent fasting is when you can intermittently choose to do it. Fasting is based on a 24-hour or longer thing, but intermittently is like going, okay, I'm going to do it this month, I'm going to do it this month, I'm going to do it this month. It's not time-restricted feeding because we need to very, be very clear on our terms so that we can get it together and actually talk about some things because when I say, when I look at a uh, guy and say, listen, I want you to fast, that does not mean eat in a six-hour window of 24 hours and fast for 18. No, no, I want you over 24 hours. Even when I talk to a woman, and I'll say, listen, I need you to fast, okay? Now, if I, I, that's why I never use the word intermittent fasting, because I don't do it non-strategically. If you think about it this way, intermittent fasting is more of a religious term than anything else, because they intermittently do it through the year based on culture, based on religion, based on things like that, so it's intermittently done. That's what it is. So I only use the, use the word fasting, or time-restricted feeding, okay? And so here's what I'm gonna tell you. So when I did the video today, it said women should not fast. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that women should not, should not go 24 hours or longer. The exceptions are when they are suffering some from major illness where their body can benefit to it, but it's under controlled and supervised aspect. And I'm not saying that they can't learn to do it on their own. If they're taught right, I, I can show you that. But when women do it on their own, I see their hormones tank. Okay, I see them tank like crazy. Well, Doc, how can you say that? Thousands of labs. Thousands, thousands and thousands of labs. I'm even gonna show you some. Okay, so let's go on. I want you to think about this. So now, watch this. And here's one thing. You say, Doc, but you just showed the benefits. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. We're going to read this slowly. Fasting, once again, over 24 hours, is great for lowering blood sugar, insulin levels, and inflammation. But it's not going to lower cortisol. It does quite the opposite. See, this is where it comes about. See, this is where the confusion comes in. You say, Doc, you just said blood sugar Insulin, inflammation, heck, the, the wellness way is based around inflammation and its response. Uh-huh. No, no, don't. I didn't say fasting wasn't good for women and men, both. They're in certain times. Men just can do it all the time. They'll be good. But the idea is this. When you look at the body like a Swiss watch, remember, come back to this. See, you got to not compartmentalize the body. Here's one thing that you're going to tell to me. This makes complete sense. I say this example all the time. See, if you go to a heart specialist, both men and women, and let's say, that, let's say the doctor, the cardiologist started to understand fasting. Do you understand? There's very little evidence for the heart, very little, unless you really get electrolyte deficient, that fasting is bad in any way. 
So the cardiologist, if he says, he said, listen, if you have electrolytes and keep the, the, the action pencils going, ladies, you can fast as long as you want. And no joke, they can even do EKGs, they can do blood work, and they can so focus on the heart. They can so focus on the heart that they will get up, they'll put on PubMed, and they'll say, fasting is fantastic for the heart. But see, let me give you a different perspective. Somebody tell me that we're only made up of one organ. See, when you realize that that might be true for the heart, but then what it does to adrenals, what it does to the female cycle, what it does to other tissues, damaging, could put it into a, a negative state, something that could even shorten your lifespan. You can't tell me just because the cardiologist says it's great for your heart, that's okay for the rest of your body because the cardiologist isn't, the cardiologist is not, is not, let me say it again, is not concerned with the other parts of the body. Don't believe me? Watch this. This was big in the 80s for all you guys that were, that were in the 70s, born in the 70s like me. An aspirin a day is good for the heart. How many times have you guys heard this? They still perpetuate that today. And scientifically, every research article I do and I read, I can see them saying that. But you know what's really funny? You know what the neurologists tell you? And I have a buddy who's a neurologist. He'll say, yep, understand. But what it does, it can thin the capillaries to the point where they can become very weak and even burst. And the smallest capillaries in the body are where? In the brain. And then that's why stroke has skyrocketed like crazy. So the cardiologist can get up on TV and tell people how amazing aspirin is and tell everything about it and say this is absolutely incredible and fantastic and anybody that says against, it's, it's blasphemy. It's, they're quacks. But then even within their own profession, they can't agree because their concept is instead of being massively intelligent and all these gears working together like a Swiss watch, they take one gear and they focus on it and say, this is the most important cup in the whole world. The mic going, well, to you. But the body says, I got a liver, I got a kidney, I got a big toe, I got a brain. See, and that's why the perspective that we have doesn't make sense. And guess what? Right now you're saying, Doc, you're making a lot of sense. Well, of course I am. They're wrong. And now you go to the cardiologist and say, hey, cardiologist, um, you know, aspirin a day can really cause the problems. Well, the benefits outweigh the risks. Do you see his hand? Catchphrases. Catchphrases. I'm, a little, I'm in a little sassy mood today, so I'm going to piss off all the Christians now. Talk about religions. And wrong. I believe Jesus. I, as I said, there's one thing I believe. I believe in the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's just me. And the rest of me is debatable. You know what I'm saying? Because I ask questions about the Bible, and then here's the catchphrase. Well, the Bible is the inspired word of God. Do you understand? Actually, no joke. I, I researched this. Go back to this thing right here. Go back to that slide right there. Do you know that every religion like that says the same thing? I get to talk to Muslims. They say the same thing. Jewish people say the same thing. Do you understand? It's like all the religions say the same thing. And I'm cool with it. Do you understand? But catchphrases. How many times over the last three years? The benefits outweigh the risks. Yeah, how's that working for us now? You know what I'm saying? See, people that can't deductively think or reason and lean on emotion aren't willing to learn something. And see, that's what I said. So all these experts that want to force you to do something you didn't want. So I said, you show up in my house, it'll be a bad day. You try to force something that I will never give into. So, anyways. I lost my point. Okay, here we go. Quite different, okay? So let's go here. Because if you look, cortisol. Cortisol is used to counter hypoglycemia. See, people think cortisol is a stress hormone. It is. It is. It's, it responds to any stressor and doesn't differentiate what the stressor is. It just knows the body's under stress. And then your body changes in physical. Do you understand that I naturally, okay, think about this. Does anybody want to know why I went outside when I started to get a little sleepy? Because I'm like, I need to put my body in a little bit of fight or flight, and I knew my cortisol would jump up. And then, oh, alertness. Alertness. Because cortisol makes you more alert. Because why? If there's danger, it's like, danger, Will Robinson. 
Was that movie? <laughs> yes, and movie buff. Yeah. You're gonna have a danger real, real, real opposite. It was a robot, okay? But the idea is this, is you're walking around going, oh my goodness, so cortisol, so and all of a sudden blood sugar goes too low, because here's what happens. We are so focused on high blood, high blood sugar because it's very common, and you can die from it. You can die from hyperglycemia. But you understand you can also die from hypoglycemia. That happens with a lot of type one diabetics. Their blood sugar gets too low, so they have to have some candy or something like that to get, jump up real quick, because their body can't regulate it. They do have a cortisol problem, but we won't talk about that today. So cortisol is used to counter hypoglycemia. So when you start to fast, guess what happens? Oh, the cortisol jumps up. See, so I showed you all those benefits, but the minute you start doing those benefits, there's also an opposite and equal reaction. And therefore, cortisol starts to jump up. Now, let's talk about this. Here we go. Let's put this up. Cortisol is the body stress hormone that increases adrenaline, releases glycogen in the bloodstream, mobilizes fat stores, and affects your alertness. I knew that, that's why once again, I said I'm gonna go outside because I want to affect my alertness. Now, this whole cortisol, regardless of a stress, so you can have zero stress, zero, okay? Now, obviously we know it's kinda of impossible, but we can have zero stress and our cortisol, just like our testosterone. For example, testosterone by nature is a little higher in the morning. It's at night. Now, we don't have a big fluctuation, but it's just a little bit higher in the morning. What happens now is this. That's just a normal hormonal pattern. Cortisol has a normal hormonal pattern. And Travis, we're going to come over here. It does. Now, this is once again, you can see other charts. They, we have to take it 24 hours and we have to condense it so it looks like there's such big swings. But I want to show you this. I want you to take a concept of this. Is this is a normal cortisol rhythm. It's called the circadian rhythm. Now, when I started to really start to understand the human body and how intelligent it was, it's telling us when to go to sleep, when to wake up, when our body can handle stress, when it can't handle stress. Now think about that. See, what technology did in medical technology, they gave us tools to observe how the body should work. Man says, I'm more intelligent than this broken down machine, so I'm gonna alter it the way I want to believe. Yeah, how's that worked out for us? Okay, see, I always come back to this. You can be critical to anything I say, but people are sicker, fatter, and more unhappy ever in life. I always tell people, how are we doing? And if you're exactly what you wanna be health-wise, don't watch this show. You see, Anne? That's the point. See, it's like, but people are in the worst condition ever in history. Now, if we think about this, Cortisol, by nature, peaks about 8 o'clock. Now, I read some research that says between 7 and 8. Let's just say between 7 and 8 to keep it there because people say, Doc, I read when 7.30 and one said 8 o'clock and one said 7.15. Okay, just say 7 to 8. Don't, you know, don't, you know, don't freak out about that way. So I said, because there can be a little variation in people, but roughly it's around 7 to 8 o'clock, all right? But what you notice, and then what happens is it stays high. Wakeness, alertness, it mobilizes fat. Hold the phone. Let's come back to that slide right here. I want to bring this up one more time, Travis. Let's bring this up right here. And you can leave it, no, you can leave it right here, okay? Cortisol is the body stress hormone that increases the adrenaline. Ah, <gasps> adrenaline gets you going in the morning, okay? Releases glycogen into the bloodstream. Ah, wait, the liver is putting sugar out there to, to get you going because your body runs better off of sugar. I know people say ketones, that's not true. That's not true. Go back to my show when I asked Dr. Blaylock very prominent uh, neurologist who is, he's absolutely amazing. I love talking to him. Your brain always runs better off of sugar. It does. That's why sometimes when women have brain fog, I'm like, man, eh, increase a little bit of sugar for a short time. And it clears up, okay? But here's what happens. See, your body knows it's trying to wake itself up and everything it's doing. Now remember, this is an observation that happens with everybody's body. See, so you want glycogen stores to come out, okay? Now, also, guess what? It mobilizes store, it mobilizes stored fat. Oh, mother fat stores. Wait, 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 wait. A lot of people say, Doc, I just can't get rid of my fat well, when you're exercising. Well, in the evening. Oh. Ladies, clinical tip. If you are gonna exercise, morning's the best time. I'll show you why. Morning is the best time. Can I say it again? Morning is the best time. Because if we do go back, if we do go back, I want to pull this up. Travis, I'm gonna just go through this, so don't, you don't know, have to go back here. I'm just gonna pull this up. Oh, a little too far. 
Watch this. Guys, listen to this. Fasting is a physiological stressor, like anything else your body may come across. It creates a similar effect to your body as exercise. So cortisol goes up in the morning when you exercise. But cortisol will go up at night when you exercise. Wait, 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 wait. So you can put your body under a physical stress like exercise, like exercise, and drive up your cortisol if you're exercising in the afternoon and ladies especially, that's very bad. Ladies, you need, if you're going to exercise, you need to exercise in the morning to keep everything normal. Well, Doc, have you ever told anybody to exercise at night? Yep, yeah, I have. Do you know when I told them exercise at night? Is when they registered basically zero cortisol from like 5 to 10 p.m. But how did I figure it out? Their blood work, their urine work, their labs. See, that's why I love when you say, Doc, when I exercise at night, I feel a ton better. Well, sure, because your adrenals are tanked. And I pull your blood and I pull your, and I do your urine work and you're like going, they're just tanked out at like 5 o'clock. Well, you still need some cortisol. I've actually had people literally register on zero. Well, you can't run your body that way. So we want to put it under a little stress. I know, see, it makes clinical sense, doesn't it? See, that's why if you have normal cortisol, or even if you have high cortisol, you don't want to put your body under stress. And that could be physical, that could be fasting. Oh wait, what did I just say right there? That could be fasting, okay? This is why a lot of people have successfully skipped breakfast, both men and women, and had results. Because here's what happens. You wake up, and once again, you have not had glucose for the course, let's say stop at six o'clock and you wake up at let's say eight for now over 12 hours. So that's why by nature, your cortisol going up, it's gonna mobilize sugar. So you can still, you can still skip eating, both men and women. But do you know why? Because your cortisol is going to elevate and what it's going to do, it's going to naturally bring up your sugar. Now, Here's, let me see, let me see if we can get this right. Put in the comments, put in the comments, you guys on, on anybody on um, the website right now? Put in the comments in Facebook or put in the comments in the, in the, on the website or, or on Instagram. I know we got like six channels running. But here's what I want you, I want you to think about. It. If we ran a lab, when do you think people should eat breakfast? I want you to think about that. When should people eat breakfast? I kind of gave you a hint. I already kind of gave you a hint when it came to nighttime. See, because of all of a sudden, let's say we fast in the evening and, and we, we, are, we, we are not eating and what's gonna happen when it comes to our cortisol, our cortisol is gonna jump up. It's gonna jump up. And so then sometimes can't fall asleep, can't do things, it's gonna jump up. Now watch this. Let's say your cortisol is extremely high, extremely high. If you eat some healthy fats, it'll start to knock it down. And it'll take your body out of fight or flight that way. See, I want you to think about that. See, so therefore, the person is better to time restrict eat during nighttime than time restrict eat during the morning. See, but it's based on their body. It's based on their body. The majority of people, and here's what happens. Here's what happens. This was, this was a food company thing because you guys have all heard this catchphrase, and I've heard, every, I've heard everybody say this before, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Actually, breakfast, when it comes to your hormones, is probably the least important, the most detrimental food of the day. Think about that. Because now, for somebody that has the dawn effect to where their blood sugar is skyrocket, eating some fats in the morning and getting that stabilized is extremely important. But that's a very small percent of people. That's a very small percent of people. See, so that's why the, the intermittent fasting craze went crazy because they just, you know, guessed right and said, we're gonna skip breakfast. But I think the majority of people that have normal cortisol in the morning should skip breakfast, both men and women. Well, doc, look, I'm fasting. No, 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 no your time re uh, restriction on your feeding, your time restricted eating, okay? You're not fasting because you have to break that 24 hour part. So now, 
I want you to think about this. Let's go on. So now as that drops down, it really starts to drop down three o'clock and beyond, and it really gets low between you know, 11 and 12, and then about 2 a.m., it starts to slowly climb up. Now, it looks like it skyrockets up this because you're jamming some hours in there, but it slowly starts to climb up and peaks once again between seven and eight. And here's the point of it. I want you to think about this. See, that's why when you do stressful things at night from exercise, from mental stress, from looking at your phone, you know what I'm saying? Getting, because there's things that stimulate cortisol. That's why people have a disruptive sleep pattern. And that leads to a thrown off of your whole circadian rhythm. Now, what is a circadian rhythm? Let's talk about it. So Travis, let's come in here for a second. Here we go. Take a look. We're going to define it. Circadian rhythm. Let's talk about it a little bit. Because this is an intelligent thing that your body does all the time. It's intelligent. Nobody, it's done it since you were a child the whole thing as far as understanding the body does not make mistakes because we have rhythms and patterns and hormonal cycles and stuff like that that exist. It's just that we're throwing them off and we think it's acceptable because we think God oh, doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. And here's why it matters. The circadian rhythm, let's just talk about it for a second. Our physical, mental, and behavioral changes that follow a 24-hour cycle. These natural processes. What is there right there? You see that? What is there right there? Natural processes. It, what you were born with it. It's genetic. It's gained. It's how people work. Respond to light and dark and affect most living organisms, including animals, plants, and microbes. Chronobiology is a study of the circadian rhythm. One example of light-related circadian rhythm is sleeping at night and before awake during the day. The average teen circadian rhythm images show the circadian rhythm of a typical teen on the right. Biological clocks, see they're called biological clock, are organisms naturally timing devices re regulating the cycle of their circadian rhythm. They compose of specific molecules, meaning they release certain hormones and, and proteins through the night. You really do, and through the day. They interact with cells throughout the, the body. Nearly every tissue and organ contains biological clocks. Researchers have identified similar genes in people, fruit flies, mice, plants, fungi, and specific other organisms that make the clock's molecular components. What is the master clock? It's, it's either talking about the all same thing. A master clock is the brain coordinates all the biological clocks in the living things. Uh, keeping the clocks in sync. Oh, Travis, come back on this one. Here's what happens. This cortisol rhythm can be thrown off by mental stress. And because I'm gonna show you very shortly how cortisol affects the female cycle, but it doesn't really affect us males. That's why mental stress dramatically affects males less than it affects females. See, well, Doc, you said this, you said that women are not meant to handle the stress of the world. No, not compared to men. That's misogynistic and that's patriarchal. Okay, cool. You know, someone said the other day that uh, they called somebody a narcissist. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. I actually don't even know, know what mean misogynist means. I think, once again, they, people, that when they disagree with you, they call your names. But what's the old things? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, if you think it is, cool. I, if it's patriarchal, if it's masculine, cool. Because then I can say, don't stress out that woman because it's gonna affect her cortisol levels, affect her cycle, affect all these things. And by nature, I'm a protector. And by nature, I have high testosterone, which would be considered high, but it's really not, it's 850. 850, wanna be exact. I've showed my labs many a times. And the idea is this, is like going, by nature, and every man's going, yeah, I'm a protector. Even if you're not taught that, just by nature, it's who we are. So, but you can see the brain, let's go back to Travis, correlates and it coordinates the biological clocks in living humans, keeping the clocks in sync. The vertebrate animals, including humans, the master clock is a group of 20,000 nerve cells. I think there's more than that, but that's okay. And that form a structure called the suprachiasmatic nuclei, or the SCN. SCN is part of the brain, called the hypothalamus that receives direct input from the eyes. That's right, and tells the pituitary and other things to do it, but let's keep going on because I want to show you some things here. Does the body make and keep its own circadian rhythm? Yes. Let's go down to how do circadian rhythms affect your health? Circadian rhythms can influence important functions in your body, such as hormones, eating habits, body temperature. Let's come back to here. Let's take a look at this. Chronically elevated cortisol and stress can lead to weight gain and hormonal issues by storing visceral fat. See, that's why women can exercise too much, raise their cortisol at the wrong time, and create and store fat. 
That's why you have to understand these things. And it's interesting because through this whole process, if you map out a woman's cycle, if you map out a woman's hormonal circadian rhythm, you can give them best advice so they don't do that. And we see that massively today. Now, I'll give you an example. Let me show you something. So here is a woman, I'm gonna show you her labs. Here is a woman that, once again, um, I want you to take a look at her circadian rhythm and I want you guys just to tell me what happens to her. What do you think is happening to her body on the inside, regardless if you know her or not, when you look at this lab? Let's take a look, okay? The right is the full page of the a lab that way and look at her circadian rhythm. By nature, her cortisol levels are nice and high in the morning. They're supposed to be in a nice response. They, they drop down towards the afternoon and then look what happens at nighttime. So her body is off its circadian rhythm. Cortisol levels are elevated at night. And so therefore her body's in fight or flight. And instead of calming, regeneration, repair, and here happens, remember, hormonal reserves are starting to build up around 9 p.m. and start to build its way up. But guess what happens? Guess what happens? When your cortisol is high and you're stressed, you can't build and be in fight or flight at the same time. So they end up hormonally deficient. And that's why you see the rest of her labs and she had progesterone problems. I'm gonna show you why she had progesterone problems. But if you look at what happens clinically this person, let's go back to, let's go, actually, Travis, let's go to this camera here. If you see, here's her cortisol pattern, but here's her cortisone pattern, because cortisone is your anti-inflammatory. So this woman was inflammatory at night. So there we go. Inflammation can be done by trauma. Toxins like bacteria, what they're eating, if it's toxic, if it's bad foods, processed food, even mental stress. This woman had a combination of all three. So not only the fact that she had those stressors that raised her cortisol levels, she had high cortisone. And why is that, why is that significant? Well, let's take a look at what happens scientifically when, these, when the stress happens. Cortisol secretion in relation to body fat distribution in obese premenopausal women. And they found out, I'm, you, can, you can read through it that way, but the idea is this. If you look at what happens, come back to me, Travis, is when that cortisol levels start to go up that way, your body goes in flight and fight and survival. And if you think of it this way, when it tries to survive, it, it, remember, back a long time ago, guess what happens? A lot of times your body would store fat because it didn't always get food again. And see, so it does, it's still when in, in that fight or flight, it can't tell the difference when that comes up. Now, that's why when you look, all of a sudden cores levels start coming up, you start to see things like this. And I paraphrase it from what was on that slide. Here we go. Visceral fat is deep abdominal fat around the organs that promote inflammation, insulin resistance, and heart disease. See, so that's why stress, even mental stress, can lead to those things. Cortisol mobilizes triglycerides, store body fat, into visceral fat. So it could have been in your muscles, it could have been in your liver, and it moves it. So it actually moves it. It says, I'm gonna take the fat and liver that was meant for just for use that way, and I'll put it in storage during high stress because I don't know when I'm gonna eat because it can't tell us if you're fasting, it can't tell us if you're, somebody's yelling at you, it can't tell us if you had a bad day at your work. And visceral fat cells have more cortisol receptors than subcutaneous fat, which is the normal fat that women are supposed to have underneath their skin, which is the fat underneath your skin. See, so cortisol levels being quite elevated like that can be very detrimental to not only people say, well, doc, because it mobilizes it just like it does in the morning, but if that cortisol gets high, it's gonna mobilize it and it's gonna put it in the areas you don't want, ladies. It's gonna go from your liver or your muscles, which has to keep some fat in there, and it's gonna put it around the core. And that's why women are like, doc, I didn't do anything, and now my belly's getting bigger, my butt's getting bigger. And sometimes they'll even see a loss of it in their arm fat. It might go on, ooh, your cortisol levels are way too high. You're under some stressor. And they're on, guys. If you exercise at night intensely, that can cause that. See, think about this. If you think about when some people did no sugar, no sugar. Doc, how is it that I gained weight and actually I, when I did no sugar? Because you're already under high stress. Because your cortisol jumped up and your body says, okay, listen, 
I'm already high. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into fat survival mode and I'm gonna build some fat. So that's why when people say, is, is no sugar challenge good for everybody? No, there is not anything on this planet that's good for everybody. See, simple, basic concepts of the body. So what I want to do today is I want to give you 11 cortisol-reducing things that are very important for you guys to help you sometimes move out of fight or flight, especially at night, because everybody, if you're working with your circadian rhythm, everybody, and that's why when people say, you know, everybody, once again, now it depends if your cortisol levels are, are high, and this is high cortisol, and you're gonna reduce it. Because let's say you're tanked out at night, it could be a little bit different. So here we go. Let's go through 10, 11 things to reduce your cortisol. Number one, it's so simple, breathe. Breathe. Do you understand, do, me, do this with me. Do this with me. And it's all about exhaling. Breathe into your nose for four seconds. Here we go. Hold for a second and breathe out six. Do you understand that if you did that on a regular basis, you ever notice a person's under stress? How are they breathing? Very shallow and fast. But if you did this on a regular basis, you can bring your body out of a little uh, a fight or flight and reduce some of your cortisol levels. Breathing techniques are extremely important. And you want to do it from your diaphragm. Remember, the diaphragm is what causes compression in your lungs because when you oxygenate the system, there is a fight or flight reduction response. Now, the one thing that I covered in one show when it came to anxiety last month, don't forget the mammalian diving reflex. I put cold water on my face right away in the morning. But if you actually are having some significant amount of stress, put your face right in the water and hold it there and hold your breath a little bit. You'd be surprised how that works really quickly. Go for a swim. Number two. Exercise, but not high intensity. There's times for high intensity, but when you're trying to reduce cortisol, long walks. See, we kind of forget, lo and behold, intelligence design, that nature is very calming. Go for a long walk outside. You know, people say, Doc, I go out for a walk. You live in a city. Get in the country. Go see nature. It's quite amazing. Very cortisol reducing. Number three, this is my thing. Because here's what happens. There's not one of us, including myself. Now, once again, I've never experienced depression or anxiety. I haven't. You know what I'm saying? Have I been extremely uh, sad for some time? Yep. Have I been, you know, hurt? Yep. Have I experienced every emotion that everybody does? Yep. Yep. More than you could ever know. Um, but here's what happens. It's interesting. No matter what state of light you're at, do me a favor. I've got one question for you. Doesn't matter if you're, it's a job, doesn't matter what it is in your life, what's your plan going forward? See, especially with women, and I've talked to them, men are a little event, more adventurous. They, can, they actually like the unknown. You know what It stresses a woman out on the unknown. It can lead to a terrible week, a terrible month even a terrible life. So whenever, wherever you're at and you're in that state, just ask yourself, what's my plan going forward? And you're gonna find out. You don't have much of a plan. And so you go to a doctor because you're stressed out, and his plan is to keep you on a psychiatric medication that leads to other suicides and other things. Don't, don't believe me, look at the side effects. And say, here's our plan with you. For how long? Forever. Because we're the experts. Yeah, how are they doing? Number four, you're going to love this one, chocolate. Not processed, crappy chocolate. Your good chocolate that has good serotonin, good calming things to your brain. It's absolutely fantastic. It's been shown to reduce cortisol levels. Number five, cod liver oil. Essential fatty acids are imperative. We do not get enough healthy oils. We do not because we do things like sunflower oil, corn oil, canola oil, all the seed oils can be very detrimental to your health. Number six, the second most thing I ever gave out in practice, California poppy. I don't know you guys, I don't know you guys remember this. Okay, I, I um, what was that really popular with the dragons, that whole TV series? Um, what's that? Game of, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Watch this because 
it caught my attention one time because Brandon's like, listen, Uncle Patrick, you got to watch this. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll watch it. I think the only TV series I ever watched before was Suits. Man, if you haven't seen Suits, Harry, Harry, oh man, Harry's the man. Do you understand? Know it's like, yeah, because he's testosterone built and he knows he's awesome, okay? Now, here's what happens. Um, so I started watching it and go back to this. What was that? What was the, well, not that one, California. Go back to the, the Game of Thrones. Um, what was the evil queen girl that, like, um, what was her name? Cersei? Is it Cersei? I don't remember. She, she was in there the whole time, and, you know, she's kind of crazy and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, but watch how many times that they said, give him Poppy. See, you guys, you guys remember that? Because you understand that herbals were medicines back then. And what they did to reduce their stress, this is not a joke. Once again, they didn't realize they're doing totally opposite. Alcohol, and they talked about poppy all the time, even as pain reducer, because that's what it does. And I caught my I'm like, holy crap. That was history. California poppy has been used for thousands of years as an herbal reduce stress and anxiety and pain for generations. Number four, or seven, not number four, number seven. Ashwagandha, one of the best adrenal adaptogens to stress there is. Number eight, once again, last night, see green tea. EG, there's an ingredient called, oh, keep that up there, Travis, I want to call it. They have a ingredient called EGCG in there, L-theanine. It reacts in 20 minutes after ingestion. So you'll see me throw lemon and green tea. You'll see me doing a lot at night because it helps reduce cortisol levels. One thing that's going to blow your mind away, and this is why I believe some other countries, especially Italy, have less health issues, is because of number nine right here. Olive oil. Olaprene. There's a chemical in there. So I've literally had people do this. Now think about what I talked about before. Healthy fatty acids help regulate blood sugar and cortisol through the night. So one thing that I, that I did for my patients forever forever. I still do this today. I'm like, Miss Jones, can you do me a favor? Can you take a tablespoon of olive oil every night before you go to bed? You see him? And the effect was dramatic. So imagine like last night I had, uh, had green tea. Um, I am taking cod liver oil right now during my, during my fast because I am truly fasting. Um, but I, didn't, I haven't had olive oil during time uh, the fast because there's a little more nutrients in there. So I'm trying to keep my fast going. But the idea is this, is otherwise take a tablespoon of olive oil before you go to bed at night. See, olive oil by nature does that. So and it's not a drug where I can't force it down, but the olipine does a wonderful job of, of interacting and helping your body metabolize cortisol and change it to where it's very, very calming at night. Now, this is going to sound contradictory. I did a whole video on this before. Getting sunlight during the day while the sun is up. You get vitamin D, which is very calming for the body. But the number one thing that produces melatonin in the body is not darkness. Darkness, it's released. But guess what happens? It's produced when you get infrared light. Watch this. My beautiful daughter and my future son-in-law are getting married in, in Hawaii in February. Watch. Get out in the morning and go sit in the sun. You know what happens by lunchtime? I want a little nap. You see that? You go to very high destination, high sun places. And next thing you know, why am I tired? I just got a ton of jacked up. I should vibe you. No, no, no. Do you understand that the infrared, you don't even need the sun. Actually, it can literally come off the ground. The infrared stimulates the mitochondria to produce melatonin. And your mitochondria are the number one, number one place to produce uh, melatonin. 10% of your body weight. People think it's all about the pineal gland. No, that's more about sleep. And... Number 11, I believe, is people are so deficient in. I can honestly tell you, I think I tell people more about potassium than anything on the planet because most people are very potassium deficient and potassium is a very calming, a very calming electrolyte, a very calming one. It is. That's why you see me take a handful every night. Now, Doc, why would you take a handful? Because daily you need 4,700 milligrams per day. That's 7 to 10 cups of vegetables per day. I don't know anybody does it. I don't do it, so I always have to supplement with it. Okay. So these are 11 things. Travis, let's put that back up there. Guys, these are just 11 things that you can practice on a regular basis. 
that can start to help support that response of a circadian rhythm, of good sleep, of calming cortisol levels down because cortisol levels, if they're elevated at night, is gonna be very rough. So you saw that lab that I used in that person, I said, listen, I need you to do these things. See, a true doctor is there's going to be a dance. That means we're partnered. That means it's not me doing something to you or you doing everything. There's a relationship that we have to understand. We're the guide based on your stuff. Now, I wanna shift gears a little bit because I wanna show you how this is significant when it comes to the female cycle, okay? When it comes to the female cycle. And so when I came up with this, it was nothing more than understanding the whole circadian rhythm, understanding what throws it off, understanding the demands of the body. So what happens, you look at the body like a Swiss watch. But here's a chart that, and I pulled this up on the internet this morning so anybody could do this. So if you're even on your phone right now or you're by a computer, just go to any search engine and type in steroid, because remember, we have steroid hormones, hormone chart. So steroid hormone chart. And I just picked one that's kind of really available and it looks like this. Now, Travis, let's go, let's go over here. All right. Well, see, now, now it looks complicated, but to us it's kind of basic, but it looks complicated. But I want to start as this, is that when your body produces hormones, there's usually like a brain hormone starts first and tells the rest to do, and they start producing, but then they convert. They convert. And then you look at past shows, hormones need now to be produced, but then they convert. Well, if you look at being produced, the number one thing you need for all steroid hormones is cholesterol. It's cholesterol. So that's why when people tell me that cholesterol is bad, I'm like, really? Cell membranes, everything has cholesterol. Your anabolic steroid hormones, cholesterol. Doctor says that cholesterol is bad. Well, reduce your cholesterol and what happens to your testosterone production? Guys, it goes down. Well, because, because the cardiologist is trying to tell you that the cholesterol is bad for your heart, which it's not, trying to tell you it's bad for your heart, we got we to look here and we're going to reduce cholesterol. And then when you're impotent, which it says on the box. See, medications are not meant to look at the body like a Swiss watch. So I don't care what your medical doctor says. I don't give two shits. You understand? Because a mirror. And just like this. If you have a heart attack and you're going to die, he doesn't give two shits either. As a cardiologist, he's going to go there and cut you open. Great. He has to break a bone. You have to do things. I get it. But see, what everyone you guys are trying to achieve health, not just avoid heart disease. And if you start achieving health, you don't have to worry about heart disease. So the point is this, is when you look at those steroid hormones, it needs cholesterol. And that cholesterol is in the liver. It's in the liver. And how it gets its cholesterol to the organ of need is by LDL. I am fasting right now. I expect my LDL to be very elevated. Doc, you, 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 remember, you must be sick. No, when you don't understand that this is intelligent, and now I can even tell my testosterone is going up. But in order to get testosterone, LDL has to start circulating through our bloodstream. But because medicine, because integrative doctors, because even functional medicine says, you no, know, we got lower cholesterol, so use red rice yeast. Well, you're just trying to use a natural thing like a drug. I never realized that that was so intelligent. That's like a lot of people say, doc, I just did a fast and my LDL's higher. Oh, thank God. That's so beautiful. Because if I'm trying to go through cell membrane repair, hormone production, response to my circadian rhythm, guys, you understand this. Let's go back here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back here to show you. Watch. Let me just click back here. Yep. I'm teaching you like I teach most of my docs now. Cortisol is a hormone that you need, that you need cholesterol for. Watch this. Wanna change your cholesterol levels? Draw them at night compared to the morning. Do you know that? Because I need less hormone in my body here than I do here. So therefore, if I draw my blood here, there's gonna be less cholesterol circulating in my system than is here. That's why I kind of laugh when people are like, Doc, my cortisol's high. All right, what's your body going through? You're wrong. And you could be eating too much sugar and causing problems and your LDL can be elevated because it's, it's trying to mobilize and get cholesterol for, and get uh, triglycerides one organ to the other. And you could be under a state of repair and guess what? Cholesterol, LDL has to go up. 
See, so this concept of like, oh, cholesterol is bad, so bad, I'm like, what fantasy world are you living in? You understand? It doesn't make any sense. So now, let's go back here. So there's that stress hormone cortisol. And it converts to cortisone. So we can, we can convert that into our cortisone, which now helps us deal with inflammation. Okay? But cortisol, I'm stressed. Guess what happens? Boom. I need cortisol. Cholesterol is mobilized. It goes to an organ. But here's the one thing that I wrote down for you because I've explained this a ton of times, but I'm going to set it down and I'm gonna, we're going to read it together because I want you guys to really see this. So Travis, let's pull it up. Progesterone, which is, once again, the hormone that maintains your sex characteristics and fluctuates through the months, is made from pregnenolone. I'll show you on the chart. The mother of all hormones. It's called the mother of hormones. While pregnenolone is made from cortisol, or from cholesterol, sorry. Cortisol is indirectly made from progesterone, or more precisely, from its metabolite known as 17-hydroxyprogesterone. This makes progesterone an essential precursor to mineral corticoids such as aldosterone and glucocorticoids such as cortisol. When you expose to stress, the body increases secretion of cortisol and adrenaline. When this happens, progesterone decreases since it is used to produce cortisol. This makes it important to control stress response in order to increase progesterone levels. Keep it up there, Travis. Keep it up there. Increase in cortisol is a decrease in progesterone. Every scientist, every doctor, every person understands when you look at the body, let's come back here, Travis, like this. In order to deal with stress in any way, you need progesterone. Guys don't need this much at all. We don't. If it drops even to zero, it doesn't really affect us. But ladies, it's essential for your life. See, testosterone isn't even connected to cortisol. See, there's that mother hormone pregnant alone. It'd come over here and cortisol can be right here. So all of a sudden, if you are mentally stressed out, if you exercise too much, if you're inflammatory from exercise, which we're gonna get an exercise piece coming up soon, and we're doing these things all the time. Ladies, stressed out, exercise, stressed out, exercise, exercise, stressed out. Duh, 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 duh. You can have a six pack and guess what happens? You're going to drain the hell out of your progesterone and you're going to drain the heck out of your estrogens, your metabolites, which you can see are even more important. And therefore you may be fit, but your progesterone is tanked out. And watch, it talked about it. Let's go here. I want to show something. Progesterone is very important, especially in the luteal phase, second part of your part. So can you get away, Travis, come here. Can you get away with certain exercises during certain times? Yeah, but if you stress out your body in that week, say I divide the cycle, I realize the cycle changes four times in the month. If you right around day 13 through day 21 and even on, but if you if you have a lot of stress, if you have a lot of problems, if you, you need those cortisol levels elevate here, you're going to drain that progesterone and you can even ovulate. You can even have this go perfectly. And guess what happens? You can hit ovulation. And if those levels aren't high, that progesterone levels drop, which we see on labs all the time. And then women wonder why they skip their cycle. They wonder why they can't get fertile. They wonder why their sex characteristics, uh, like their estrogens keep on going in the breast tissue metastasizes. And then they end up with breast cancer. See, ladies, you exercise during that week, you're screwed. I didn't say don't move. So you crossfitting women who, once again, end up depleting your fat, which we're going to get into next week, because your fat is actually helps convert all those things, and you have a six pack, you can't have normal hormones. So when you run your estradiol, which all you need is a little brain hormone in your ovaries to respond, you can produce pretty any of it. You're gonna be so deficient in other hormones, but because your doctors don't measure them, and every person that tried to argue with me and said, Doc, you know what's up with this? Is I have perfect hormones. I did my blood work. This woman, this, uh, and no one's face. 
this MD reached out to me. I hope she's watching right now. And she said, hey, this woman wants to, you know, can we get you guys on? She even, she, I'll even post a video, by the way. I gave her my information, I gave her phone number. Crickets, I haven't heard anything from her now. Because the fitness woman, the girl who looks like a man, sorry, you're not supposed to look like a dude. Do you understand? You deplete all your fat tissue, you're guaranteed your things, and just because you ran a little bit of blood work, maybe your doctor ran estradiol, estrone, DHEA, testosterone, and they're all normal, you haven't had your hormones completely tested at all. You're not the exception to the rule. Even the MD says, she's the exception to the rule. No, she's not, because all she did was blood work. And on top of it, I guarantee she didn't even do full blood work. Because as a protector of women, as a protector, I'm sitting there going, bad advice, ladies, bad advice. The fitness industry does not mean you're healthy. On the flip side, you obese Lizzo's, you're not supposed to have rolls, you're supposed to have curves. Did I offend enough people? I hope I did. I'm just in that mood today. You know what I'm saying? What's our response online? Everybody's loving it. So anyways, so that's why this went viral all over the world. If you can teach a woman the time that she can have high intensity where she will not deplete her hormones, there's great things, delays you can do through a month. This is how important it is to teach women so they do not drain their hormones, they do not end up health problems, and they do not things. We'll post this in the comments below. It's all over, it's on our website, it's things like this. I wrote that as a young in my 20s. And no doctor, scientist, professor has ever looked at it and said, it doesn't make sense. Because all I do is all I did was look at this right here. Oops, sorry. All I did was look at this right here and said, Travis, let's go here. So I got just a simple concept for you, ladies. Because your cortisol levels change through the day, you should know that so you know when to take care of your body. Because you cycle every month, and cortisol, testosterone, progesterone, and progesterone was greatly affected by your cortisol levels, maybe how we manage our month, and men, how you help your woman manage her month because you have it much easier. Remember, I've always said this, life is hard, I get it. We all have hard things. You're gonna have hard things today. I'm asking you men to make it a little less hard for your women. Make it a little less hard. It's hard being a woman, even if things are good. It's hard being a man, even if things are good. But guys, I'm speaking to you. God created us to handle it. Did. Sorry, feminist. But you know something? Feminist is an idea that nobody can, nobody can protect. Why would you protect such a dumb idea that hurts women? See, because we're not equal. Equal means same. We're not the same. You see, Anne? We're not the same. I don't want a woman to work out as equally as I do. Actually, it's physically impossible. No matter how strong a woman gets, she's not benching three, 400 pounds because she's not made that way. And if she did do that, she's gonna turn her body into a dude and she's not gonna have a menstrual cycle. It's like all these fitness, these fitness women that they starve themselves and they work out and they deplete their, hydro, their, uh, their water and they're up on, up on stage and, they, and then they put these freaking stupid um, creams on to make themselves look dark. And they wonder why they get very messed up after that. Sorry, Lizzo, you're not sexy. And the picture, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm put it up since I'm in that mood. I'm in a testosterone mood. Come on. Oh, there we go. Now I got to go. Oh, I pushed it a little too much. There it is. There it is. Well, son of a gun. Sorry, ladies. That's not sexy. It's not. See, even all the guys here are like, 
Nope. You think you know what we want, you don't. We want somebody feminine. Not supposed to be a dude. Just like we're not supposed to be a woman. It's biologically impossible. See, that's why when you say, Doc, you have such strong opinions. Okay, did I not make sense today? I'll debate anybody on it. See, and I, and I sent out a mass amount of tests to show women. If you look like that, it's going to be a bad day for you. See, it's really, it's really interesting because if home hormones are normal on a woman, guess what? Her body and her mind have become very feminine. It is. In our world today, we can't even talk like that. I can. Do you understand? Because you know why? Because we need to protect what is right. I'm sorry. And I, w I encourage that MD that reached out to me, who I've heard crickets from. I gave him my cell phone and stuff like this. Guess what happens? Come on, jump on Instagram. I'll test that woman who hasn't been completely tested. I'll show her that she can sit there with her thing and go, Doc's wrong. Really? Why? Because it makes you emotionally feel bad that, you're, that you look like a dude and you're not supposed to? So, that being said, next week, I'm going to show you how I give you a little prelude to it already. Next week, I'm going to show you because I talked a lot about cortisol and how it affects progesterone from the circadian rhythm, gave you some stress relieving things. Next week, I'm going to show you quite simply that when you exercise, which is good, but you guys all know this. People say, look, doc, I got a pump. Ooh, actually, that's something. That is looking kind of good there. That's the same thing. Let's kind of get that there. Look at that there. That's the same thing. Here, here. Okay. Next week, the cortisone, by nature, you get a good little pump, but that's an inflammatory response. And ladies, if you're getting a constant inflammatory response from your tissues, you're going to drain your progesterone. That's why when you exercise all the time, that's like why when young teenagers start to start to, they're developing their cycle, they stress their body out from cortisol, they have mental stress, they, they, they deplete their progesterone, and that's why they skip into later cycle. Puts them into a menopausal depleted state. And the body do whatever it has to survive. But shuts down fertility, shuts down growth. But they can be fit. Do you understand what fitness really is? Fitness is nothing more than depleting glycogen and sugar stores to, from every part of your body. That's all fitness is. That's all it is. Do you understand? That's all it is. And then you stress the muscle and it expands. Do you ever notice, watch this. If you, there's a, there, if you put a person into high fitness and then put them back into a normal state, watch this. Here's a guy I'm really a fan of, okay? His name is Chris Hemsworth. Everybody knows Thor. But I would say this. Chris, if you're watching right now, when you were watching, and, and I asked women this, the first Thor was amazing. The rest of them was just once a bunch of woke feminine bullshit. Because what was the one thing about Thor, the first one? He was masculine. He was a dominant. He was a competitor. He was a protector. Then they had the women take over, and he tried to become comedic. And that's why each one of the Thors got worse and worse and worse because they made it more feminine, feminine, feminine. And it's really funny because here's what happens. Watch this. I'll say women. I'll say, you know, when he acts that way, is he less sexy? And women say, yeah. Because women, I'm telling you right now. And, and respond to me. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. If a guy acts super feminine, are you turned on? Nah. You see, women like a masculine strong man because by nature sorry if somebody gets in a fight with Lizzo and it's a guy guess what happens it's gonna be a bad day for her see because by nature we have more muscle mass we have more strength that's why I do agree with when Joe Rogan was very upset about the male who moved into a female UFC and crushed the girl's skull and the woman couldn't even say something like this was wrong how badly he hurt her because I don't care, you get punched by a woman, punched by a man, it's dramatically different. Just among a mass, understand basic physics, mass 
speed is going to hurt a lot more than less mass and less speed. So, oh, here's the point. Look at Chris Hemsworth when he's not, when he's not going for Thor rolls. His body loses some of that muscle, gets rid of it. See, because he pushes hard for the roll, but his body can't maintain that high level. And it's not even supposed to. Because even men can overexercise. Even men can cause so much inflammation. Do you guys remember this football player? Don't know if you ever heard of him. His name was Walter Payton. Fit as can be, one of the greatest running backs of all time. And guess what happens? See, that's why if you ever notice, you can consistently do these things that can damage your body. There's a state that you're supposed to be at, and the only way that you're going to be at is be guided by the proper people. So, we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. So now, yeah, if you go back to the fasting, can men dramatically do it and have massive benefit? Absolutely. Women have to be, you know, if you look at the window that I'd like to see women eat at, based on their circadian rhythm, their cortisol levels, got to get that tested, and you can get a better idea when is the best time to time restrict on your feeding and your eating. Because when you have that, I can also tell you in general, is it better for women to eat from like from 2 to six, two to 8 p.m.? Absolutely. Or maybe 2 to 10? I would really say a 6 to 8 hour window would be max. Because if you get that nice circadian rhythm, because if you actually start to put some ingredients in you around 2 o'clock on, let's say you stop eating around 8 or 9, you can keep those core levels down, you can work with the rhythm and be dramatic. And that's why intermittent got popular because for the majority of the population, not everybody, Majority population worked really well. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I will continue to do more, and we will. I can't believe we'll be on for two hours. And you'll be on show. Now, remember, I didn't even get to the exercise part, which I'm going to go a little bit more to next week that way. So, anyways, my name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Thank you guys so much for watching ADP, A Different Perspective. I hope that I made a lot of sense to you today. God bless you. See you guys later. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A Different Perspective is leading a health revolution.